I'm Dr. Harold Burstein from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, and I'm happy to share with you some of the highlights from the ASCO 2022 meeting focusing on breast cancer. Let's start with the big showstopper. This was the Destiny Breast 04 trial, a study of the antibody drug conjugate trastuzumab deruxtecan in tumors that were so-called HER2 low. Now we know that this drug is very active in HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer, where it has become a standard treatment in first or second line therapy. This study also looked at advanced breast cancer, but looked at a group of tumors where we have not previously used anti-HER2 targeted therapy, a group of tumors so-called one plus or two plus by the conventional assay. This is a larger group of patients, about 50% of all breast cancers will have such a uh, immunohistochemical phenotype, if you will. So the study compared this drug, trastuzumab deruxtecan, against standard chemotherapy and found that the drug outperformed standard chemotherapy with a much higher response rate, a longer time to tumor progression, and improved overall survival. So these are obviously really important data for a very large number of women with advanced breast cancer. It will broaden the use of trastuzumab deruxtecan dramatically. From a patient point of view, this is still like getting chemotherapy. It's an intravenous medicine. There are real side effects, including hair loss and fatigue and blood counts and rare concerns about inflammation of the lungs or so-called pneumonitis. But overall, the patient experience is pretty similar to what it would be to get standard chemotherapy, maybe even a little easier. So this is a great option and we're already starting to implement this in clinic based on these data and pending uh, what is assumed to be FDA approval and guideline endorsement in the weeks ahead. A second really important study in metastatic breast cancer was so-called NRG-BR002. This was a study looking at a very practical question. For women who have oligometastatic breast cancer, defined as only a handful of sites of metastatic disease, in this case up to four sites, would going after these sites with radiation therapy and sort of zapping each one of them improve the long-term outcomes for patients compared to just using drug therapy or systemic therapy alone? So it was a randomized study. Again, half the patients got standard systemic therapy. That would be chemotherapy or hormonal therapy. And the other half got those same treatments plus this focal radiation treatment to up to four different sites of metastatic cancer, like a bone lesion or a lung nodule or what have you. Unfortunately, the extra radiation therapy did not affect the long-term outcomes. The problem here is that while those treatments were effective and reasonably well tolerated, ultimately the cancer appeared in some other sites at the same rate of progression as it would with systemic therapy alone. So that's important for our patients to know. Now, that doesn't mean we don't use radiation therapy in advanced breast cancer if patients have symptoms, a, a painful bone lesion or a, a focal area that requires addressing uh, in some way. We certainly use it. But in the routine course of treatment, we do not go out of our way to recommend um, uh, stereotactic radiosurgery or stereotactic radioablation of those particular lesions. A third trial also dealt with radiation therapy, but now in the setting of early stage breast cancer. This study, the so-called Lumina study, led by Tim Whalen at McMaster University, focused on whether or not women who had very low risk early stage breast cancers really needed radiation treatment or not after a lumpectomy or breast conserving surgery. So the historic recommendation has been that if you have a lumpectomy, you almost always need radiation therapy to achieve optimal control of the tumor within the breast itself. Itself. What Dr. Whalen and colleagues did was identify a group of women who had really low risk breast cancers. The tumors averaged about one centimeter in size. They had very favorable features under the microscope. They had low levels of proliferation as measured by a so-called KI-67 test. And all these patients were going to take anti-estrogen therapy as part of their adjuvant treatment. And so they treated about 500 patients that way, but they omitted radiation treatment. And what they found through five years of follow-up was that the risk of in-breast recurrence was extraordinarily low, 2.3% to be exact. And this suggests that a larger number of patients than we had imagined in the past might safely be treated with breast conserving surgery, anti-estrogen therapy in the adjuvant setting, but without radiation therapy treatment. Now these data had five years of follow-up. It must be acknowledged that many people in the radiation oncology and medical oncology community think you need about 10 years of follow-up to really prove that point. So we'll be following that data with interest. 